It's so much darker when a light goes out than it would have been if it had never shone. That quote is from John Steinbeck, one of the most important American authors in history. It also speaks true to Steinbeck's character, which we felt the loss of in 1968 because of his great contributions to American literature. Not only was John Steinbeck one of the most prolific writers of the 20th century, but he also had very strong and very progressive beliefs about the Nazi party, classism, and the mistreatment of migrant workers. These opinions made him a rare treasure of his era and of even more relevance in today's time. Here in this video, we will discuss the life of Steinbeck and discuss his work. We will conclude with his legacy and how Steinbeck has impacted the literary landscape today. John Steinbeck was born on February 27, 1902, as a child to a family with a deep connection to natural living. He and his family lived in Salinas County of California, so Steinbeck had many of his formative memories around the natural beauty of the California Valleys. His connection with the West and the outdoors will come into play when we begin discussing his works. Steinbeck tried his hand at collegiate level education but dropped out of Stanford University before he could graduate. In 1925, Steinbeck moved to New York City to begin work as a freelance writer. Despite his efforts, the freelance career didn't work out and he soon moved back to California where his novel writing career began. In 1929, Steinbeck published his first novel, Cup of Gold, and in 1935 he had his first critical success. Tortilla Flat. At this point, Steinbeck had truly hit his stride, and he published his two most influential novels, Of Mice and Men and The Grapes of Wrath. Steinbeck continued to publish books through the 1940s and 1950s, and even served as a World War II correspondent for the New York Herald Tribune throughout the early 1940s. Steinbeck returned from war with some psychological trauma, but many fresh ideas. He wrote two feature films, one for Alfred Hitchcock. He continued writing novels and traveled to the Soviet Union in 1947. Examples like this prove Steinbeck's socio-political involvement that turned up throughout his life. Steinbeck considered his magnum opus to be the novel East of Eden, released in 1952. The tail end of Steinbeck's life saw him releasing his final novel, the Winter of Our Discontent, in 1961. To understand Steinbeck's inner monologue on a deeper level, we must delve into his writing, as it was the true window to his soul. Steinbeck was the author of over 30 novels. Among his most important were Of Mice and Men, The Grapes of Wrath, and East of Eden. Of Mice and Men is Steinbeck's first leap into the mainstream literary scene. Today, Of Mice and Men is known as the staple of required reading for high school students. It follows the story of George and Lenny, two displaced laborers in search of a new job during the Great Depression. Steinbeck was known as a writer of social commentary and often had points to make on the current status of American living, and this book is no different. Through Lenny and George's endearing story, Steinbeck discusses mental disability, loneliness and friendship, and dreams. It was Steinbeck's highest regarded book to date at the time of its release. The Grapes of Wrath explores similar subject matter to Of Mice and Men. The Grapes of Wrath is yet another realist novel centered around the struggles associated with the Great Depression. Yet this time, it involves a family of tenant farmers struck by the events of the Dust Bowl. This is yet another novel that has become a classic in its own right and is frequently studied in high school. Scholars have praised The Grapes of Wrath for its religious subtext and overall thoughtfulness. It has sparked much discussion and is regarded as a passionate piece of social commentary. Today, The Grapes of Wrath might be Steinbeck's most popular work, but as mentioned before, he considered his best work to be East of Eden. East of Eden is described as Steinbeck's most ambitious work. 
It discusses the life of two families whose lives are intertwined. Its intention was to describe Salinas Valley, California, Steinbeck's home, to his two sons. So, in a way, this book is one large homage to valley life in California. The story takes place through multiple time periods throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, and its major themes include love, greatness, self-destruction, and guilt. This book also lends itself to religious inspiration, as evidenced by its title, and was praised in doing so. Based on the discussion of Steinbeck's three most important works, you can see that he was a man of pattern. This is no slight of character, though, as Steinbeck proved passion in his stance on a select number of topics, like American culture and history, the economy, and family. These themes, settings, and contexts are found uniformly across many of his works. Steinbeck's prominence in the modern American public school system certainly proves that he had a major legacy. Steinbeck's role as an iconic author who cared for the low-income families of America had a profound impact on the way these people were viewed in society. He was sympathetic to these people's situations and he worked to peel back the curtains on the honest and often sad lives they were living. His compassion for others is best embodied through this quote of Steinbeck's. I wonder how many people I've looked at all my life and never seen. This quote shows how much Steinbeck truly cared for everyone's story, regardless of whether or not he has met them. It is also a good representation of the personal guilt that troubled him throughout his life. But most importantly, it shows Steinbeck's intentions to pay attention to others and show them how much he cares. Steinbeck's legacy lives on as downtown Salinas is now the home of the National Steinbeck Center, which is a museum for Steinbeck's life and works and pays tribute to him and his legacy. As I researched John Steinbeck's life, I saw that he had words for the changing Florida landscape, which is especially relevant to current citizens of Florida. On a 1960 road trip through the United States with his poodle Charlie, in his book Travels with Charlie, he wrote, As I went farther and farther north and it got colder, I was aware of more and more advertising for Florida real estate. With the approach of the long and bitter winter, I could see why Florida is a golden word. As I went along, I found that more and more people lusted toward Florida, and that thousands had moved there, and more thousands wanted to and would. The advertising, with a side look at federal communications, made few claims except for the fact that the land they were selling was in Florida. Some of them went out on a limb and promised that it was above tide level. But that didn't matter. The very name Florida carried the message of warmth and ease and comfort. It was irresistible. His perceptions in his book Travels with Charlie were right on the money about the death of localism, the growing homogeneity of America, and the trashing of the environment. Steinbeck certainly was prescient about all that. His books were published in 45 languages, adapted into 13 movies, and have been studied for decades by scholars and high school students alike. The legacy and importance of Steinbeck is truly unrivaled.